Hello everyone. Welcome to the Parent Education Series module on COVID-19 infections in children. I am Dr. Lavanya Padmanabhan, consultant pediatric gastroenterologist and hepatologist from Rainbow Children's Hospital, Bangalore. I am here to talk to you briefly about gastrointestinal manifestations of COVID-19 infection in children. Gastrointestinal symptoms are a very common uh, feature in children who have been exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. They can present with GI symptoms during the acute phase of illness after they have covered from the illness and also the small group of children who develop the hyperinflammatory syndrome or the MISC syndrome can also present with predominant gastrointestinal symptoms. This happens because the virus directly infects the cells of the gastrointestinal tract and viral shedding has been noted in the stools and also virus particles have been found in the tissues from the stomach and the intestines. Now whether the viral shedding in the stool which is much more prolonged than viral shedding from the respiratory mucosa can lead to infection what is called as the fecal-oral transmission is still a question of debate. However, we should all ensure good hand hygiene always. Now coming to the symptoms during the acute phase of infection, at least 10 to 25 percent of children present only with gastrointestinal symptoms without cough or cold and the predominant symptom is diarrhea. The other common symptoms being nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and fever. Children who have recovered from the illness can also prolong, present with prolonged symptoms like chronic abdominal pain and chronic constipation. Sometimes they present acutely unwell with very severe abdominal pain and diagnosis such as acute appendicitis or acute ileitis which means inflammation of the intestine and acute pancreatitis have been made. Abnormalities in liver function tests have also been well documented especially in severe infections and there are reports of adults and children presenting with acute liver failure related to COVID-19 infection. A small proportion of children who develop the hyperinflammatory syndrome after recovery from the acute infection can also have GI manifestations predominantly and this again would be the same similar symptoms of abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting with fever. In a study published in the United Kingdom, they have documented that 94% of children who presented with MISC had predominant GI symptoms and it was a spectrum of symptoms and signs. These children need to be carefully evaluated and monitored after recovery also as most of these signs and symptoms will recover during follow-up. It will completely resolve but a small percentage can continue to have chronic symptoms or abnormal lab tests which will need further evaluation. Children who have chronic gastrointestinal conditions like inflammatory bowel disease or kids who have got liver disorders like autoimmune liver disease and children who have received liver transplant for various indications should continue their long-term medication. Abruptly stopping medications because of fear of contracting a COVID-19 infection would be much more detrimental and hence any such queries should be discussed with the pediatric gastroenterologist immediately and adv advice regarding medication should be followed. So my take home messages here would be gastrointestinal symptoms are very common in COVID-19 infection in children both in the acute and after recovery phase but not all gastrointestinal symptoms are always due to COVID-19 infection. Hence any symptom or sign that is persisting even after the child has recovered from the acute infection needs a thorough evaluation. Parents please do not hesitate to seek health care if you feel your child is unwell or you are worried because hospitals are doing the best to run a safe COVID free environment. Hence, please do not hesitate to attend for your appointments or lab tests as needed. And then last and most important thing, children who are on long-term medications for chronic conditions, please do not stop them without taking advice from your pediatric gastroenterologist. Thank you.